Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Life Transformation Radio. I am your host, Master Resilience Implementer, TEDx Speaker, Business Positioning Strategist, and International Best-Selling Author, Sean Douglas. This show is currently heard in over 90 countries. So whether it's your first time joining us or you've been listening to us for some time, I want to thank you to those who are listening from around the world. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformation. Here, we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing, highlighting that transformational moment that changed our lives and how we use it to then transform others and elevate their lives as well. Now, you can listen to us live right here on the Blog Talk Radio Network, Tuesday through Friday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can join our Facebook Group Life Transformation Radio Community, where we can interact with the listeners, interact that I bring on the show, and continue the conversations right there in the Facebook group, Life Transformation Radio Community. You can subscribe, rate, and review Life Transformation Radio on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spreaker, Spotify, TuneIn, Player FM, Radio Public, Overcast, CastBox, Himalaya app, the Google Play Music app, Pandora, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Life Transformation Radio. So please subscribe, rate, and review the show. On the show, my guests are entrepreneurs, speakers, business owners, coaches, podcasters, authors, amazing human beings that are impacting the world around them. And my guest today has done exactly that. If you have any questions for any of the guests that I bring on the show during our live broadcast, please give us a call at 657-383-1109. Again, the number is 657-383-1109. And with that, please help me welcome to the show my guest for today, Byron Morrison. Byron, welcome to Life Transformation Radio. Hey, thanks for having me on today. I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited to have you too. Where are you calling in from? So I'm in Stratford-upon-Avon over in the U.K., Oh, that's amazing. Around about where is that? I used to live in East Anglia back in 2001 to 2004 uh, um, when I was stationed with the Air Force at RAF Lakenheath. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, strapped upon even it's kind of in the middle. If you know where Birmingham is, it's about 40 minutes from that, yep. about an hour and a half from London. Nice. Okay. Yep. I know exactly where Birmingham is. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, we used to go to Nottingham all the time. That's where. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we used to go to Nottingham all the time. Uh, I remember there used to there was a Hooters out there we used to go to. Uh, <laughs> we've been to I've been to York, I've been all around uh, Kings Lynn, all around uh, into Scotland. So yeah, I had a great great time visiting a lot of the places over there. So very very beautiful country. Yeah, we're definitely lucky, especially around where I live. It's a very kind of quite quiet area of the country, and there's a lot of kind of like nice countryside. And, yeah, it's just a great place to be. Yeah, most definitely. The title of this episode is The Evolved CEO with CEO Coach Byron Morrison. He is the author of the best-selling book, Become a Better You, a speaker and CEO coach who helps CEOs deal with the shadow side of success. He helps CEOs handle their new level of pressure and deal with the shadow side of success without crumbling or losing their composure. The Evolve CEO is a strategy, coaching, and consulting program, but with one big caveat. Most programs are heavy on the inspiration, fluff, and light on the implementation support. When actually you don't need another yes man or someone to hold your hand, you need a sounding board and someone who is in your corner so you don't have to feel like you're in the ring alone. And Byron is the man for that job. 
for more information on how to get involved with his coaching, go to Byron, B-Y-R-O-N, Morrison, M-O-R-R-I-S-O-N, dot C-O dot U-K. Byron Morrison dot C-O dot U-K. Click on the link, copy and paste it into your browser. His Facebook links and his LinkedIn link is right there in the show notes. Send him a friend request, letting him know that you listened to his episode of Life Transformation Radio. Byron, the first question that I have to ask, and I believe is the most important question you could ever ask yourself, is why? So why do you do what you do? That's a great question. And to answer it, I really have to kind of take you back a few years. You see, kind of growing up, I was always one of those people who wanted to make a difference. So I wanted to impact the world and do something that mattered, but never really knew what that was or what it could look like. So like a lot of other people, I went to university, I got a degree, and then I got a job. And eventually I found myself in a decent career, earning good money on track to a life that other people would deem a success. But honestly, very, very unhappy. I was overweight. I was struggling with confidence. I was unfulfilled and pretty much just going through the motions. And then my dad got cancer. And during his treatment, he had most of his bowel surgically removed and he spent 25 days in ICU, uh, most of on life support, breathing through a tracheostomy. And that for me was the wake up call that if I didn't do something about this now, that was going to be me. So I set out on this journey to turn my own life around. And along the way, I learned everything I could about mindset, psychology, health, and high performance. And the more I dived into it, the more I realized how much my dad's success had contributed to him getting sick. Because at the time, he was working 14-hour days. He was massively stressed. He was under a huge amount of pressure. It took its toll on his health. So eventually, I take everything that I learned and that would be the foundation of my best-selling book, Become a Better You. And it's why I started my coaching business, helping other CEOs and business owners really take back control of the areas of their success that are pushing them to the limit. And with all the hustle porn and everything that's going on, you know, between some of the high-level, you know, CEOs, I'm sure that there was a huge need and that awakening that you talk about and the realization that, man, I'm working myself into the ground. I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere, but, man, I'm doing a lot of work. Yeah, I see it all the time. In so many of the clients I work with, it's pretty common for them to be working 12 to 14-hour days where they're so focused on building their business and their empire that it lands up in a cycle where they sacrifice their health, their relationships, the other part of their life. They always land up putting everyone else's needs before their own. And inevitably it takes its toll because when they're the ones running the business and steering the ship, if they go down or something happens to them, the entire business can fall apart. And that's why it's so vital that actually we get them to make the time and prioritize on dealing with the challenges that they're facing on a day-to-day basis. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, I love that, man. Absolutely. And that's a great why, especially being it so personal that a you know, family member and having surgery. I mean, that, that, it's got to be tough. Yeah, it was definitely one of the, the most difficult thing I've ever had to go through. But one thing I'm eternally mm-hmm. grateful for is he did pull through. So the fact that we got a second right. chance with him and he's recently had his seven <laughs> years all clear is something I'm grateful for every day. Yeah, absolutely. And you and I both know, you know, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. We all go through those dark moments, those dark nights of the soul, those moments, you know, call it whatever, you know, fancy name you want to call it. The focus of the show is about those dark moments. It's about that transformation. We were going one way and then something happened, a fork in the road or a, uh, you know, one of my previous guests actually got hit head on in a collision and almost died. So sometimes it hits us head on. Sometimes it hits us from the side. So what would you say is your transformational moment that has changed your life, which put you on the path to what you're doing today? 
for me, this is going to sound a little bit simple, but one of the biggest kind of turning points in my own life is kind of growing up, like I said before, I was always overweight. I never really understood fitness. It was always something that I was the kid picked last in gym class. It was never something that really appealed to me. One of the big kind of turning points in my life was after my dad's kind of cancer, pushing myself to actually go and start getting in shape. I remember the first time I went into the gym and seeing all of these kind of big guys grunting and staring at their biceps in the corner. And I remember that first day <laughs> convincing myself, like, this isn't for me. I even went home and right. said to myself, there's some story that, oh, it's too busy. I'll come back later when I can do it properly. And looking back, it's because I had this huge fear because I was worried what people were going to say. I was going to get judged. And that one defining moment where yep. I pushed myself to go back would eventually go on to spark a passion where I wanted to learn more about nutrition, where I wanted to understand how the body worked, which would turn on to mm -hmm. dive into psychology. It was something that was this very small pushing my comfort zone experience that led me to where I am today. And if I didn't face that, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Mm. Gotcha. I, I think it's absolutely incredible. You know, no matter how many times I ask that question, what is that transformational moment? I always learn something new. Everybody's transformational moments hold such a key to somebody else's success. You know, they say that success leaves crumbs. Right. Success leaves clues and we follow those. So I, I absolutely love the moment that you chose. How have you used it to then create the evolved CEO and how have you used it to then elevate the world around you? So for me, the biggest thing was realizing, especially as I kind of went through my own journey, that there is no one size fits all solution. So often you look at all of these kind of gurus and they've all got their uh, plan and they're like, follow this and do this routine and it'll change your life and be the secret to success. And after speaking to thousands of people yeah. over the last few years, I've seen how many people try and do it and then fail. And this is what I found in my own experience yep. and the people I worked with. It's all about figuring out who is the person as an individual and what's going to work for them? Because yes, you can have best practices. Yes, you can have strategies and tactics and everything else. But if someone can't stick to it, it's never going to work. So the Evolved CEO was essentially something I developed over the last five years of figuring out the framework to take someone through and then tailoring it around them, their routine, their family, all of the other different areas of their life and really treating them as the individual it's about helping them evolve into the person that they want to become rather than just looking at them as another kind of number going through some course because that's for me why we've got such incredible results because it is that tailored bespoke experience really focusing on the root cause of the problem of why people are struggling with the stress and pressure of their position, why they're really overthinking and having difficulty making decisions, why they're really struggling to get the confidence to execute on the actions they need to in their life and business. We fix that, and that's how we build that momentum towards the future. Mm. I like that a lot. I, I think that's a great plan. I like how you mentioned that some of the gurus you know and it works for them and this is what they've and I, I mean how many courses have you taken over the past couple of years how many courses have the listeners taken over the past couple of years how many webinars how many products and digital ebooks and consumption 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 of videos have you taken and tried to apply but it's like does it work for me this doesn't work for me this doesn't work for me i, I would bet it's a lot yeah you see it all the time. Uh, there's so many people fall into this trap of just bouncing on from one course to one program to one book to the next, and they'll make some changes, but they can't stick to it long term. And then they start to blame themselves, thinking that they're the reason why they can't follow through, when actually it's because they're trying to force themselves into a mold that simply doesn't fit. 
Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So does the does the evolved CEO that platform and that coaching program does it really capitalize on that person's strength? It's probably what it sounds like. Is it capitalized on on that person's strength rather than the shotgun approach where it's like, well, this is the five steps and you need to do these five steps. Yeah. With what we do, everything's done on a completely one-to-one basis. And the people who do come into it, it's all by application only. So it's before anyone can even sign up, I've got to sit down with them and spend a good amount of time to understand where they're at, where they want to get to, what's holding them back. And from there, be certain, can I actually help them? And is it going to be the right fit to get them to where they want to be? And that's how we can start the process Mm -hmm. of tailoring it around them. So it's not simply something that people can kind of just go online and buy or sign up for. It's very kind of strict of who I take on because at the end of the day, social media is a very powerful tool. So I don't want to Mm -hmm. risk my own reputation. And also from my own morals and values, I built the entire business off of the basis of only working with people I'm certain I can help. And it's worked out pretty well so far over the last few years, having that moral kind of grounding. Very cool. Very cool. And that's a great freedom to have. You know, you get to work with the clients that you want to work with. You get, you, you get to, you know, hand pick and choose and, and, you know, the ones that you can definitely help you like, man, I'd love to work with that person. That's the way I feel about it. I look at people I can help. I'm like, yes, like I can, I know I can help you. And I get fired up because I, I know what they need. Right. I know exactly what's going on with you. Like, I'm like the perfect. You ever get that? Like, I'm the perfect person (laughs) to help you with this. Please let me help you. Other clients I get, I'm like, well, let's dive deep and let's see what comes up. You know, like sometimes you got to get real deep because they've been burned by coach. Most of the people that I that I work with have actually been burned by other coaches. You know, and I said, look, that's not going to happen. And this is what we do. And the guy explained everything to them. Like, let, let's come up with a plan together. We're going to come up with a plan. It's not, oh, just go through my course and do my stuff and do my stuff. It's, well, what do you want? What do you see? What do, right. And so it, it's really opening them up to the new possibilities. Cause right now they're just feeling like, look, every coach has screwed me. Now what do I do? Yeah. I think that's the huge problem with an unregulated industry because so many people can just go and buy like a 995 life coach course and yep. with how easy it is to kind of get some fancy branding and marketing. They can look like they're this huge deal, even though they've never done it before, which everyone's got to start somewhere. Like I have absolutely no problem with the kind of new coaches coming in because that was me at one point. Like, I think it's great that people are pursuing that, but it's when they try and fake it till they make it. And it burns people and I hate puts that. them in a very dis- difficult situation. Whereas I think the, the coaches who do really well who are starting out are the ones who kind of admit, they're like, look, I'm completely new to this. I want to help you. Let me kind of work with you to get these results. And they have that honesty and integrity up front, which I think will be so much more powerful for the industry. Whereas instead of so many kind of charlatans, it reflects badly on the people who can actually help and get results. Let's talk about that fake it till you make it. There's a lot of people that do that. And I don't know if it's part of somebody's coaching program. I don't know if they have this mentality like, well, fake it till you make it because really no one's going to notice anyways. Maybe it is your private jet. Maybe it is your cars. Maybe it is your Ferrari. Maybe it is your BMW. You know, maybe you went to the ATM and took out a bunch of 20s and some 100s and, you know, whatever. I mean, you went to the bank and got a bunch of money and then, you know, just put it right back into the bank or like, you know, maybe, maybe somebody's like, you need social proof. And so you need to, you know, look stupid and do it this way and, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I mean, I, 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 I guess I can see both sides, right? Like if I could see make it is really stupid, which I firmly believe in. Um, I, 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 number one, you need to operate with integrity, which a lot of people that I know personally, do not like, like they've told me that they're not like, no, this is, this is crap. But, you know, I'm going to try to make money. And like, you're selling snake oil, like you're crap. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know how they're okay with that. You know, I mean, some big, big names out there. I've talked to people that have worked with big, 
huge coach names, and they literally are scammers. They're selling yeah. you hope. And then now, even notice the new thing now is all the results are not typical of the most person who got the res- most results. It's like some variation to that, right? All the results yeah, it's like kind of legal this, disclaimer yep. that they have to put on. Right. Which kind of, kind of says it all, really. I don't, but, I don't have it. Yeah. I don't use that language because all of my results are typical. <laughs> like, yeah. like people come to me for a very specific reason. I think that's the problem with a lot of the industry, though, especially if you look at kind of the business side, because it's become so easy to just rent a Lamborghini, like knock up a Facebook ad, yeah. and then just claim that you can help people make millions of dollars with doing pretty much no work. And it's preying on people yep. who are desperate, because it's generally the people who fall for it are the ones who need a way out. They're looking for that quick fix to a bad situation. And I. Morally, yep. I don't understand how they can do it, but it's, yeah. luckily, I think platforms like Facebook are really starting to crack down. If you look at kind of their advertising kind of restrictions of anyone promising to make money claims and stuff they're reducing, which I think is amazing mm-hmm. because they do really need to police that, but it really does yep. make the entire industry look bad when there's a select few abusing what's kind of going on. Yeah, I was at a, um, I was at an event one time, and it was so funny. I literally laughed out loud in the event, and everybody was like looking at me. I'm like, sorry, I didn't mean to, but it just it made me laugh out loud so doggone funny. So, the speaker on stage was talking about, and this is all, mind you, this is in at least within five to seven minutes from the time. From the time that he says what he says until the time to the end of, of the point that I'm making is about five to seven minutes. But he's on stage and he goes, yeah, you know, I used to follow money and I used to chase fame and fortune and I got burned and a lot of my friends got mad and I was just so focused on money. I was motivated by money. I would only do stuff for money. I never would help people and serve people and blah, 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 blah. And we're going to serve your way to the top here at this event. We're going to serve our <laughs> way to the top. I'm going to teach you how to serve. At the end of my talk, I have a program that you can buy into. And I laughed, like, out loud, loudly, like, lol like, laughed. You know, I'm like, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. And so the whole time I'm like, does anybody not see the irony here? I I used to follow money and oh my gosh, and I used to be this and I used to be this and I used to be this, but I'm ready to serve my way to the top by my program. Oh, <laughs> We're gonna sell you something at this event. And I'm like, oh my god! Like I laughed out loud, <laughs> and then people caught me in the hallway and they're like, bro, that was funny. Like I was thinking the same. Like I'm on it. Like I'm like really like like get this right. Do you understand what's taking place? <laughs> the worst thing for me is the people that, um, I don't know if you've been through any of the marketing courses yourself where they talk about all the value stacks. And they're like, oh, if you're selling yes. this product, you value want to make stacking. it be worth at least 10 yep. times the amount. So people are just like adding yep. on like stuff that's worth like a, a thousand or 10,000 or ridiculous bonuses yep. or something they've never sold for that amount. Yep. I worked with a Once coach in a in the past, and he was like, he was like, just make up a price. I guess it. I was just like, yep. and he got an yep. order that didn't want to do it. I was like, I'm not going to sell something. Yep. I was selling like a $200 course at the time. And he was telling me to put like over $10,000 worth of bonuses from stuff that I was just kind of like pulling out of my ass. And I was just like, no, right. <laughs> it's just so bad. Right. And I've seen it to where they were like, yeah, this one bonus right here is worth $1,500. And then this one bonus is worth 5000 And then this other bonus. And this guy literally had like 130-something thousand dollar bonuses. Like literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in bonuses all for the low, low price of seventy nine ninety seven. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what Whoa. the – is happening right now like i was just laughing i'm like who like how is that value like how is that one thing five thousand like how please tell me how where's the justification of value it's not that i'm a skeptic i just i mean come on you know like can you imagine if you went to a car dealership and you're like 
tell you what, this brand new 2020, you know, or like 2021 Mustang Cobra, you know, we're going to throw in heated seats. We're going to throw in a heated steering wheel. Those all cost at least 5000 And then <laughs> we're going to sit there and throw in magnum rims and chrome rims or like awesome freaking CD player, this one radio, or we'll throw in a lifetime subscription of like XM radio. We'll throw in every oil change for like five years for free. That right there alone is $5,000. And all of those bonuses cost 60000 We're going to give you the car today for $45,000. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, what the hell? Like literally you'd be like, no, like what are you talking about? Like instantly, instantly you'd feel something was wrong there. You're like, no way. Like not all of those bonuses cost that. Like, and that's not how cars are sold. That's, that's not how cars are sold. They're like, Hey, do you want this package? You want this package? This is what this costs. This is what this costs. Yeah. It just baffles me. Like the worst ones are like, I've seen people um, put a checklist, like a single A4 piece of like paper in their kind of value stack. And they were like, this is worth at least $5,000. And it's just, yeah. yeah, I think we're very much in the same mentality that. Oh, the white sheet. Yeah, I've seen white things. sheets. So like this white sheet is 997 for this template. I'm like $1,000 for a template I can Google for free. Like, are you kidding yeah. me? Like. I don't know, man. I don't know who's teaching this stuff. It's not Brendan Burchard, and it's not guys like uh, like Tony Robbins is doing that. Tony no, Robbins is Ru- teaching that Russell stuff. Russell Brunson talks um, a lot about in his books. Uh, okay, so Russell Brunson has uh, – he just has yeah. – he just came out with another one. But he's got yeah, tra- 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 Expert Secrets, secret, and he has uh, – he's got one more. Expert Secrets and um, – a dot com like secret internet is secret, one of them. Marketing yeah. Secrets or something like that. But yeah, the whole value stack actually in expert secrets. secrets. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't do too much of those guys that I don't follow, like Grant Cardone. I don't follow Grant Cardone. I did for a while, <laughs> but I just I got like he's not my uncle. I don't I, Uncle G. Like I no 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 no, and his his hard pushy 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 sales. Like there's actual scripts that you can get. And then you watch people execute them, and they're pushy salespeople. And then I'm like, I wonder what his return rate is, like his kickback rate or chargeback rate. I wonder what his chargeback rate is. I, I'm, I'm really curious what his chargeback rate is. Yeah. I got a lot of clients lot. coming to me who follow Grant, and then by the end of the process, yep. uh, I had one guy recently who was listening to his audio book like every day, watching his videos. He was literally consuming like two hours of his content a day. And after we like really started speaking about it, he realized actually how much that was holding him back because he was putting all of this pressure yep. on himself of, to abide by some standard of living and he was just miserable. And it wasn't until where he actually realized that, that he actually thought actually this probably isn't good for his mental health or the kind of life he was trying to create. Yeah, and I know a lot of guys, you know, like Gary Vaynerchuk, um, Grant Cardone. So I like I like Gary. My wife hates him, but I like I like Gary Vaynerchuk for for what he's saying. You know, I'm not like oh my god, hustle twenty four seven, hustle 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 twenty four seven. I got I, I I hustle when I sleep too, and like you know, like it's not that, but just the what he says. Like, well, just do it this way, or just do it this way. I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Just do it this way. Oh, that's a great idea. So he's got a lot of great ideas. He's like, he, like literally, he's like, take this table, get on the subway, go to the free site, like, like that type of stuff. I'm like, let's do this, right? The, the tangible takeaways, like, that's what people want. They want the how. Like, how do I do this? So when I coach my people, I, you know, let's say they want to create a coaching program, like, give them the what, sell the how. That's what you're sell the how like set up the systems set up the network do the like what is the how that's what you're selling them you're selling the how and they're like oh i thought that no you're selling the how (laughs) the value is that you're selling the value if people i think if people just just operated from a value driven standpoint and sold based on the value that it gets somebody i think it would surprise a lot of people 
Yeah, I think that's also one of the big kind of reasons why I developed the Evolved CEO, because it was very much kind mm-hmm. of targeting people in a position who know what they want. They have that self-awareness. They're not looking for a quick fix. They're not looking for a book or a course. They want someone to come in and be like, okay, this is the problem. Help me fix it. Guide me and help me actually reach that next level. Because the clients that I work, am lucky to work with, they're already great at what they do, but they want to become even better. And that's why for me, it's such a rewarding yep. line of work because it's not kind of mm-hmm. playing on the kind of minor leagues for a lot of people who are trying to get started and who are kind of buying into a lot of the stuff that we were just talking about. And it's, yep. it's very much kind of the people who are more certain of, okay, I actually want a proper solution for this. Well, the funny part is that if you are a person of value, you're going to build a following anyways, and people are going to want to know more about you anyways. Like most of my clients, they're like, man, I've been following you for like a year. I love your content, your videos, your podcast. Like I love what you're doing. Like I'm ready to – like I had a client that I just started working with. We've known each other for two years, three years. He's like, oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm like, hey, well, whatever you want to, whenever you want to, man, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. And – you know, he's been commenting on my, on my post and I put out something valuable. He's like, Oh, I need to do that. I'm like, yeah, man, you need to do that. Just let me know when you're ready, man. We'll, we'll take care of that. We'll take care of that. He's like, yeah, man, no problem. We'll take care of that. Finally, like just like a month ago, he's like, dude, I'm ready. I'm like, let's, let's do this. Pay me the money up front. And we rocked it. You know? So, awesome. I mean, people think that like, like, Oh man, I need to get this client now. I need this client now to just keep on doing what you're doing. And you're going to get those clients. What I've learned about social media is people are watching. You may not see it. You might get four likes on a post. I promise you, they are watching you. Yeah. Also, one of the biggest things, I don't know if this is the same for you, but for me personally, the last thing in the world I want is someone to come across me and then hop straight on the phone to want to talk to me about working together because I always want someone to be in my ecosystem for like a good kind of three, six, 12 months before they even want to hop on the phone because it means they've consumed enough of my content. The no like and trust factor is there. It's then not a process of trying to sell them on something. Instead, it's a conversation of, okay, this is where you're at. This is where you want to get to. Is this the right fit for both sides in order to get you these results? Because it starts with that relationship from the very beginning Whereas I think too many coaches who go straight for the sale, that's when they get difficult clients. That's when they get people who don't follow the process because it's some, that trust isn't there. And I personally don't believe that coaching can work without it. Well, not to the extent that the results we want to achieve to do. Oh, for sure. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to sell somebody into something that they don't even need, then they're not even going to get the result that they want. The first question that if, when somebody wants to work with me, so w- what I do is I help people create, launch, and monetize their podcasts, their books, speaker careers, or, or just a business. You want to launch a business? I'll show you how to create it. I'll show you how to launch it. I'll show you how to monetize it. And that's really what we do. It's not spammy marketing. It's not anything else. It's, it's literally – me showing you out of the four businesses that I've created, what we do every single time we launch a business or we launch a podcast or we launch a book. It's pretty much the same process because I know it works. And some people go, no, I'm like, that's awesome. Well, when you're ready, let's talk. Like, I'm not, I, I'm just not hard up for, for, for money. I'm just not hard up for a sale. Like, I don't mind waiting a week or two weeks or whatever. You know, I'm like, I know they're going to come. I just do. I just, I know they're going to come because they always do. You know, and I'm not out chasing, chasing sales. You know, yeah. some people are, some people are like, man, I really need this. I really need this. I really, well, your system's broken. My friend, if you're constantly chasing money and chasing sales, your systems are broken. And it's not about having a funnel. It's about being confident in what you deliver. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I was having this conversation with a client recently and they were having a lot of trouble with their sales. And I was talking to them, they were kind of going through it. And the kind of problem we uncovered was they were attached to the sale. They were putting all of the pressure on themselves that they needed to convert Mm -hmm. this person. And 
I told them to yep. go back to our initial conversation when they bought in with me and remember the fact of how easy it was because I didn't care when they got on the phone if they bought or not. It was that conversation mm-hmm. of let's figure out is this the right fit. If it's not, I'll be honest. If it's not, I'll point you in the direction of somewhere else. I, I always approach a sales call with the mentality of let's help this person and if from there, working together is the path that's right, amazing. If it's not, then it's not. It's really not a big deal. But if in sales, you're constantly focusing on, I need to close this, I need to get the sale, the intentions are wrong. And also, people can sense it. They can tell when you're not being true to yourself. Like I had one sales call recently, and the guy even said to me, it's like, oh, you're a fantastic salesman. I was like, well, it's because I'm not trying to sell you. Like it, I, <laughs> right. like, like I don't care if you don't buy or not. Like if we both think it's the right fit and you want to work together, amazing. If at the yep. end of this it's not right, then that's a win as well. Because either yep. way, it's giving them that clarity on what, what do they need. The thing that you that just hearing you kind of reminded me of. I was at an event and I was speaking. Uh, I think midway through. I think I was like midway through the event. But the opening speaker was absolutely phenomenal speaker, but it made me laugh a little bit right in the beginning. And I knew that this was going to be a huge pitch. And the guy cleared, I think, like 200, 200K, I think, in a room. I mean, it's a high-level event. You know, I think he cleared like 200K. And I'm not a real big, like, pay-to-play speaker. But in this case, I was like, let's do it. Like, high-end people are going to be there. Like, let's do this. You know, and I, you know, I made some decent money. But uh, what was funny was... You know, first thing he said is like, hey, welcome. Raise your hand if you think I'm going to sell you something. And some people raise their hands and go, don't. He's like, I'm going to sell you something. Just letting you know, this is a pitch. I'm going to sell you something. I just want to get that off my chest. I'm going to sell you something. Did I mention I'm going to sell you something? I'm going to sell you something. And he said it like (laughs) over and over. And I was like, all right, all right, I get it. He goes, believe me, when I sell you this, it's going to be good for you. It's going to be good for me. It's going to be good for the economy. (laughs) What the hell is happening right now? So, I mean, very, very good. Very, very good. And, and, you know, maybe he does good in his programs. Um, I'm just not, not going to buy, you know, because I don't feel like that's something I need. If it was something I needed, if it was something I needed, I'd be like, let's do it. Like, this sounds awesome. Like, let's just do this. Right. Uh, but it wasn't something I needed, but I just thought it was funny. And what you were saying was, you know, it has to be good for them. It has to be good for me. You know, it's got to make sense. And I'm like, yeah, I love that. But it was so funny because the guy's like, trust me, you want this program. It's good for you. It's good for me. It's good for the economy. <laughs> it just like, made me laugh. Like, ah, uh, does that really work? Apparently, <laughs> apparently it works. Uh, it's, I think it's very much speaks to the mentality of who they're speaking to as well. So that kind of goes back to what we said about before, of the, especially a lot of the kind of gurus preying on the people who just want that savior. They want someone to take them by the hand and kind of yep. make all of these wild dreams come true without any work. And I think that's a big thing that needs to change. So it's great to hear someone else yep. kind of on a similar kind of mission of like, do you know what, let's put the kind of person that we're working with first and make yep. sure it's what's going to be right for them. Yep. Absolutely, man. So as we close the show, uh, I want to leave the listeners with something. So give them a message. Do you have an opt-in, a freebie or something? What do you want to leave the listeners with as we close the show? If they listen to nothing else in this program, what do you want them to know and to understand? For that, rather than actually kind of, pitching or trying to like opt in anything i'd rather kind of uh, pass on a message of what if anyone takes nothing else away from this i'd love for them to kind of hear and that is one of the biggest lessons i learned from my dad's cancer is just how short and fragile life can be and if right now you've got this goal this vision this dream or even if you're kind of going through the motions wondering if there has to be something more Never hold yourself back Mm -hmm. from going after it because at the end of the day, the harsh reality is far too many people are going to wake up at 65. They're going to look back at the life that they could have lived and the chances they didn't take. And they're going to be thinking, what what if? 
And what's far more powerful yep. than or painful than rejection or failure or not getting it right is regret. So always remember, you only have one life and one chance. So make it count. Yeah, I love it. You'll know, get one chance. Make it count. Outstanding. Barrett, I want to thank you so much for being an amazing guest on Life Transformation Radio. I'm glad we got to do this. It's been a long time coming, and I love what you're doing, love the mentality, and I just wish you the best in the rest of 2020. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Life Transformation Radio listeners, an amazing guest impacting the world around him. If anything has resonated with our conversation today with Byron Morrison, please connect with him on social media. His Facebook and LinkedIn links are right there in the show notes. Connect with them. Let them know that you listened to his episode of Life Transformation Radio. Byron Morrison could be reached at byronmorrison.co.uk. byronmorrison.co.uk. Facebook, LinkedIn, right there in the show notes. As I close the show, I always say, live your brand. Find every opportunity to live out the core values that you hold deep in your heart. And I call this living your brand. So until next episode, live a great life.